Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, which is the third of a series of three, I'm going to be showing you how to continue doing integrals of products of sines and cosines uh, by making the examples a little bit more complicated than uh, in part two. So assuming you've watched the other two parts, you're now well aware of the patterns and identities that you need to know in dealing with these kinds of integrals, but also you've seen some examples already carried out to completion, so nothing is going to catch you off guard. Now, without further ado, I'll jump straight into it and I'll show you what you need to do for each of the examples. So in example one over here, I have a case where the powers of sine and cosine are both even. And it's reminiscent of one that we did again in the previous video. But in the previous video, the 4 was a 2. So we were able to factor outside um, the power 2 and use a double angle formula to continue the integration. This time it's not possible to do that. However, wouldn't it be nice if it was? Well, nothing is impossible if you set your mind to it. And if you want to actually do that, you could technically factor out a sine squared right now of x, leaving you with the desired product over here. You see what I'm talking about? You can factor it this way. And it's equivalent to what we wrote up here. Now, the reason why I'm doing that, if you don't remember, is because I want to abuse this. If I go back over here, you see right now that this sine squared, a sine cosine product can be written right now as sine of 2x divided by 2 because that's what we're trying to replace right here. So that's exactly how I'm going to write it as and it's getting squared as well. So in the next step over here I have remaining that sine squared of x and then the sine of 2x divided by 2 according to the identity and then squared as well. Now before I move on, we don't want to make an algebra mistake. I'll just distribute everything and show you what you've got left. The one fourth just basically gets pulled outside and you're left with the sine squared X and the sine squared of two X instead. Now, what can you do here? This seems uh, convoluted. You're still on the right path, believe it or not. Now, I've worked on this guy. How about looking at this guy a little bit? Wouldn't it be nice if I had any means here of killing right now the actual squared dependency of sine? And I do. I can go over here and remind myself that I can substitute, if you can see here, what sine squared is in favor of cosine 2x eventually. So I'm going to go ahead and do exactly that. And if you recall, that identity has the negative with it and not the positive. So I'm going to go ahead and use that identity right now. Okay, so we have one fourth and then this is getting replaced with one half and then one minus right now, minus uh, cos of 2x. And all of this is multiplied right now by the remaining factor sine squared of 2x and we're taking the integral of all of that. So what can I do next? Well, I can pull outside that constant giving me 1 eighth and then I can start distributing the terms inside to give rise to two integrals right now. The first integral is simply going to read sine squared of 2x as you can see dx and then the second integral it's going to be a negative and then sine squared of 2x cosine of 2x dx. Okay, so the first integral over here, we kind of know again how to reduce this further, right? We know how to reduce these squares by using the double angle formula. So what can I do for this? I can go back here and drop a power of sine, making the substitution here that x is equal to 2x, which on the other side, the only change happening is that this here is going to be 2x, so in total I'm going to have 4x instead. So I'm going to be substituting, basically right now, uh, this expression for my first integral that I'm dealing with over there. So I'll show you again how that looks like. So we have the 1 8th sitting still on the outside. Then on the inside, we start with the integral of what? Of 1 half 
dx right now. And we're taking away, as you can see, the integral of 1 half, because again, I'm distributing in here, 1 half of cos 2x? No, 4x, as you can see here. So that's what we have right there. This replaces completely the first integral right now, and it's done and done. This is now completely taken care of. The second one over here, even though um, if your eyes are trained, you can probably see what I can do immediately. I will make a quick substitution, a quick U sub for this one over here so that you can see it a bit better. So assume over here for this one that U is equal to 2X. And then over here, that means that DU is 2DX. That's all that we're going to do. And if I make that substitution right now, I get what? I get sine squared of u, cos of u, and then dx can be replaced with du over 2. Okay, so that's what we have there. And now we can start solving the integrals that we have at hand. So the first one here simply gives you, again, um, just x over 2, as you can see. The second one here, this one is a little more um Interesting, we have a one half, but now how do you integrate that cosine? It must have come from a sine without its sine changed. So it will be coming from a sine 4x, but because if we differentiate the 4 would pop out, we have to cancel it. And if we combine the one half with a, with a 1 fourth, we will get a 1 eighth overall. So that's what we're expecting to get for that second term right now. And then for the third term, for the third term. We've seen this before. I'll keep the one half handy on the outside here, but we've seen what to do with the inside. This is again our pattern where we have the nth power of sine and multiplied by some factor of cosine. This is this again. So we know how to deal with these and that's exactly what I'm gonna go and do right now. So the result here will be the power of sine raised by one and then we're going to divide by that new power. And we're going to close this, add our integration constant. We're almost done. I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit better. So what I'm going to do to make this more interesting, I might just factor out, um, seems like everybody has a common factor of 1 half. So I will have 1 over 16 sitting on the very outside. Then I'll have x as the first term. Then sine 4x over four and then I will have minus here we know what u is we made the substitution earlier it's just 2x so that's what we plug back in here and we're just dividing by three because we took this outside and then we close the bracket and add our integration constant so this is the harder example that I had for you here lined up and you can see again that you can deal with it nonetheless even though it's on the more cumbersome side we have the tools needed. Now, for the second example, I've, again, switcherooed the power so that the cosine has an even power and the sine has an odd power. Once again, um, we want to mess with the odd power because the even one, if we use the Pythagorean identity, you won't be able to keep a reserve cosine here. You will kill the cosine completely. So I'm going to go with this one and basically kill two powers of sine by using the Pythagorean identity. So I'm going to be left with one minus cos squared here and then one factor of sine remaining on the outside. Then I'm going to go ahead and distribute here so that I get cosine to the 6x sine x dx minus cosine to the 8th x as you can see times sine x dx and now this is again perfectly solvable because we know what that pattern again solves to don't forget again to flip the signs of the incoming parts so our job is to raise the power of cosine by one for both of these integrals divide by the new power that's what i'm doing here and flip the sign that we have coming into the final result all right, and don't forget again your integration constant, and you're good to go. It is now very simple to be dealing with these all of a sudden. So, if we look at the next example I've got lined up, it's similar. 
You might be tempted again to work on this guy, but you don't want to uh, because that sign, if you use the Pythagorean identity, will vanish and you won't be able to have one of the patterns that we've established in yellow in the yellow table. So you want to mess with this guy. However, you notice there's a problem. It's cosine to the fifth and each application of the Pythagorean identity will steal two factors of that cosine. So that means that you need to apply the Pythagorean identity simply more than once. Namely, you have to square the Pythagorean identity so you can steal four factors of cosine right now. And that's exactly what you're going to see me doing here. I'm going to have one minus sine squared x, but squared so that this is equivalent right now to cos to the fourth. And then I'm going to have one more cosine left and then the actual sign untouched. Once I have that going, I can expand right now that first term, giving me one minus two sine squared x and then plus sine to the fourth x and the remaining terms here stay untouched. And then I can go ahead and distribute, giving me three integrals. Namely, I will have a sine to the fourth x cos x dx. And then the two can be pulled outside the second integral, giving me right now sine to the sixth x cosine of x dx. And then if I distribute the third one, I will have an integral of sine to the eighth of x cos x dx. And now all three of these follow the same pattern that we've established earlier, namely this one up here. So we know exactly again what we need to do. So let's go back and finish this off. We need to raise the powers of our signs by one. So we have sine to the fifth, sine to the seventh here, and sine to the ninth here. Making sure again, we haven't made any mistakes. All right, and then we divide by those new powers. So divide by five, by seven, and by nine. We don't mess with the signs. We put them in as they're coming in. So positive, negative. Don't forget the constant here, the two that we are multiplying the integral by, and then a plus for the last part over here. And then we merge these together. We don't forget our integration constant C, and we are good to go. This is how we deal with this one. A little bit more cumbersome because we got to square this. Sometimes you even got to cube this. So it's not, you know, that big of a deal. It's just more cumbersome. So keep that in mind. And so for the last example over here that I've got lined up, both of the powers are odd. Technically, you could break down the sign to get, you know, uh, remove six powers of sign and leave one behind. I don't recommend doing that because you can literally work on the other one here as it has the lower power. So why, you know, are you going to do um, the Pythagorean identity cubed instead of the Pythagorean identity one time? You know what I mean? So it's not that advised. Now, if I go ahead and use the Pythagorean identity on the cosine, what I end up having is one minus sine squared. That kills two powers of cosine, leaving me with one power. And then the sine to the seventh is untouched. So I can go ahead and start distributing over here, leaving me with two integrals, one of them reading sine to the seventh x cosine of x. And then the other one here is sine to the ninth of x cosine of x dx. And now I'm at the fortunate position where again, I have the pattern that is outlined right there again. And I know exactly what I need to do to finish this problem off. So if I go ahead, I get here, I have to raise the powers of signs by one. So sine to the eight and sine to the 10th here, then divide by those new power by those new powers. And then basically, I don't flip the signs that I have here. So I get a plus and then a minus for the, for the second one. I merge them together, add the constant C from the integration. And we are again golden. This is the result of this integral. So again, a little more cumbersome powers. Um, you see sometimes you have to square the Pythagorean identity or you have to do some weirder manipulation like on our very first example where again we had to... Um, Think a little bit outside the box regarding um, how we can apply still our patterns 
but the argument of our sign could be different. Nobody's preventing us over here from changing what is in here. Of course, it's going to have appropriate consequences on the other side in terms of a constant, but we can always still abuse uh, the, the, the patterns that we've established. And if it makes you uncomfortable and you can't do it in one shot, uh, no matter what you had here right now, no matter what you had here, it could have been a, a 10x or a 20x. All I encourage you to do is just use a, U, a quick U sub and basically substitute that 10, 20x with just U. And you'll see again how to take care of that constant. You'll be able to use uh, the pattern that we've established with in the U world instead of the X world. That's all. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, this is the finale here of, of the uh, sine, cosine products. I will probably make videos on secant tangent products and cosecant cotangent products. But for the time being, again, I hope you've enjoyed the video and the series. If you found it helpful, consider again subscribing.